We have an active shooter. We have an active shooter inside the fairground. Welcome to Active Shooter, a podcast that covers the whys, the hows, and the aftermath of active shooter and mass casualty events. They have an active shooter in the building. A second call says they uh, are being attacked. I've been shot. <laughs> One six nine ten means we got shots fired. Four fifteen a at the Route to ninety one. Sounded like an automatic firearm. Active shooter, reports of an active shooter, active shooter, active shooter of mass casualty incidents. Thank you for listening. You are listening to Active Shooter, a podcast that may contain adult themes, explicit language, and graphic depictions of violence. Portions of this show may be traumatic for those under 18. Listener discretion is advised. We're going to get straight to the breaking news this morning. There has been a deadly shooting at a restaurant 30 minutes outside of Nashville, Tennessee. A gunman opening fire at a Waffle House in Antioch. Police telling us there was one shooter who fled on foot. At least four people were killed with several wounded. And we are learning that a patron wrestled the gun away from the shooter. In episode 29, we discussed what being a hero meant. Some heroic acts are larger than others. But the scale of the act can never minimize the heroism. In today's episode, we will discuss a hero who put his life at risk when he decided to charge at a deranged gunman who was committing a mass shooting at a Nashville area Waffle House. Active Shooter the Podcast is a High Five Holly production, and I'm your host, JT. If you've listened to our prior episodes, you know that the Active Shooter podcast team has taken the No Notoriety Pledge, and we will not be sharing the real name of the shooters that we cover. We will be giving the shooters a pseudonym and refer to them by that name throughout the episode. This will help in clearing up any confusion in the story, while remaining true to our pledge and not naming the shooter by their actual name. In today's episode, we will refer to the shooter... As Todd. It was early morning on April 22nd, 2018. Really early morning. 3.20 a.m. to be exact. 29-year-old Todd drove his gold-colored Chevrolet Silverado pickup truck to the Waffle House located on 3571 Murfreesboro Pike in Antioch, Tennessee. He put the truck in park and sat inside for a few minutes. Surprisingly, the Waffle House had quite a few customers inside, around 20, in addition to the waitstaff and chefs. Chuck Cordero was a regular at the restaurant because he was a 24-hour roadside serviceman and often worked odd hours. He noticed that all of the tables were full, so he decided to sit in his car and listen to music while he waited for a table to free up. While Chuck was sitting in his truck, he noticed that a chef at the Waffle House, Torian Sandlin, who went simply by T, stepped outside the back door. Since Chuck was a regular customer, he got out to go say hello to T, the popular chef. Before Chuck could even say a word, Shots rang out. At first, Chuck didn't know exactly what was happening, but when he saw T dressed in a blue checkered shirt, black apron, and visor collapse to the ground, it sank in that they were being shot at. Chuck ran for cover and crouched behind his vehicle, trying to hide from the shooter. I pulled up. They were pretty busy, so I didn't go right inside. I waited in my car. And my cook buddy, he was outside having a cigarette break, and he waved at me, and I got out of my car to go inside, and as soon as I got out, this guy in a pickup truck pulled up, gets out of his vehicle, and wearing nothing but a jacket, and shot some guy right at the door, and then he shot my buddy who was trying to run down the sidewalk, and then I 
drop to the ground around my car and then I could see from underneath my car he shot through the windows of the restaurant and then he went inside and started shooting. I couldn't even run. My legs gave out. I fell to the ground. I tried to crawl. I mean, I've got scrapes on the back of my hands because my body just wasn't working. I was so scared that he was going to turn around and come around my car and chase me around my car because when I got out, him and I were face to face. He was a couple cars away from me. and see you? I mean, he, we, we both got out of the vehicle at the, pretty much at the same time. No, I've never seen him before. Mm -mm. Nope, but he killed one of my good buddies The cook in there was a good friend of mine A real good guy named T T was a good guy, he was my cook uh, Not always working when I came Sometimes the other people were cooking for him But he was real friendly, real nice guy They're all real sweet people in there Joe Perez just pulled into the Waffle House parking lot And got out of his vehicle His car got a flat tire and Joe was going to call his brother to see if he could come help him change it. Joe took out his phone to make the phone call, but before he could even enter his brother's phone number, he was shot and killed instantly. Thankfully, Todd never saw Chuck hiding behind his vehicle, and Chuck's life was spared. Todd walked into the Waffle House main entrance and continued firing his gun. He was shooting aimlessly, Pools of blood began to appear on the floor, and guests who were able to die for cover did so, while others, tragically, slumped in the booths they were sitting in. Some of the guests tried to flee through the back emergency door, but unfortunately the door was locked, forcing them to hide in the women's restroom, which was right next to the emergency exit. The Ebony Groves was killed instantly inside the restaurant, and Aquila de Silva was shot in what the paramedics thought was his arm. In actuality, he was shot in the arm, but the bullet went through his side, broke three ribs, and punctured his right lung. Two hours after arriving at the hospital, Aquila was pronounced dead. While Todd was shooting inside the restaurant, he suddenly stopped. It appeared that the gun either malfunctioned, or he was out of ammunition. James Shaw Jr. was injured by a bullet grazing his arm. He noticed that the shooter had stopped and he didn't waste any time. Not concentrating on his injury and running on pure adrenaline, James took this as an opportunity to try and subdue the shooter. James knew what he had to do. He had to stop the threat. He charged at Todd and wrestled with him for a short time before James was able to get the rifle out of Todd's hands. James threw the firearm on the other side of the counter. Suddenly, Todd was weaponless. Uh, when I saw the probably the third shot, uh, third or fourth shot, and I saw the Waffle House staff go like this, like they literally dropped and separate, and then I turned around and I saw a guy um, on the ground, and then I was like, oh my. So what did you do? I grabbed him and I grabbed the gun, and I started hitting and punching and doing anything I could to get the gun ajar. Just kind of grabbed it from him and I lifted it real high and I just tossed it over the counter. And I don't think I want to be a hero. I think I just want to be James. And James used what he had to free himself. And in the midst of freeing himself, he saved, you know, people. Todd was wearing a green bomber type jacket and nothing else. He was naked. After James fought the weapon away from Todd, he took off the jacket, which contained several magazines of ammunition, and slowly walked away from the restaurant. The Waffle House uh, looks like there's a female location saying there's a male white who has no clothing on has, that's shooting at the location. I've been getting multiple calls on this. At this point, numerous 911 calls were made, and the police were en route. At first, the dispatcher sent police to the wrong Waffle House location, which cost emergency responders precious moments in rendering aid. Waffle House 816, Murfreesboro Pike said someone is shot, and we're being advised that this is not the Waffle House at 816, that it's going to be the one at 3571 Murfreesboro Pike. When police finally arrived at the scene, they saw thick, black gun smoke making it almost impossible to see into the restaurant and they could smell the scent of gunpowder. It didn't take long for the officers to notice that the shooter was nowhere to be found. Witnesses told officers that the shooter fled, 
the police had a much, much bigger problem on their hands. There was now a deranged gunman who had already killed mercilessly on the loose. The manhunt, that would ultimately last 36 hours, was on. Todd knew he didn't have much time and ran back to his apartment complex, called Discovery at Mountain View. He ran into his one-bedroom apartment and grabbed a black backpack and packed it with some necessities. Almost immediately, Todd was put onto the top ten most wanted list, which was put out by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. Not far from the Waffle House, a laptop bag was found in a field, and it had Todd's name on it. Late yesterday, the police department was informed by a citizen from another county that while he was traveling in the area of I-24 and Old Hickory Boulevard near the truck stops of America, he came across a laptop case, a soft laptop case. Uh, The citizen uh, saw it just laying there in the grass, picked it up, took it home with him to the other county. Uh, When he got home last night and opened it up, he saw that there was a handwritten identification card with the name in the bag. Now, our intelligence information tells us that was in that immediate area on Saturday night. At this juncture, we don't know if that laptop case wound up at I-24 and Old Hickory Boulevard prior to the shooting or after the shooting. If is still in the woods, uh, he's been there now for more than 24 hours, and at some point he's going to have to uh, try to come out for food or water. So the law enforcement presence is continuing significantly. Uh, we would urge citizens not just in this area, but also uh, down to the Rutherford County line and beyond the uh, I-24 Old Hickory Boulevard area, west of I-24 and Old Hickory Boulevard, to also be vigilant. Uh, We've talked to Lamar Advertising today, and very soon electronic billboards will be going up throughout the region with his photograph urging persons to call in if they see him. Investigators didn't have any time to waste. It was pouring rain, and the search crew of over 160 officers had to act fast. Lydia French, who owned a construction company with her husband, was at a construction site and noticed a man walking in deep mud without a shirt on, and wearing black pants. She heard about the Waffle House shooting early that morning and knew they were still looking for the shooter. Lydia, who was thinking she would rather be safe than sorry, called the tip line, reporting the man that she saw. And he's in behind the elementary school, headed towards the TVA lines in the woods. From a distance, it looks like this guy. He's got mud all over him. Detective Kyle Williams had been searching for over 20 hours straight looking for Todd. Detective Williams, who was an undercover narcotics officer, entered the wooded area where Lydia reported she had seen the man. Knowing that Todd was armed and dangerous, Detective Williams had his weapon drawn in case Todd decided to open fire. It was quiet in the woods, and the detective was searching by himself when he heard a rustle in some of the brush. Detective Williams turned his attention to the noise when he saw a tuft of blonde hair pop out of the bushes. Detective Williams immediately ordered the subject onto the ground and told him to put his hands behind his back. When he looked at the face of the person he just detained, he knew the manhunt was over. The person he just put handcuffs on was indeed Todd. Detective Williams couldn't help but notice that even though it had been raining for almost 36 hours straight, Todd's clothes were bone dry, except for the backpack he was carrying, which was soaked. He also now had a burgundy-colored shirt on. The shirt was all ripped up, and he had numerous cuts all over his body. At 1.07 this afternoon, was taken into custody in a wooded area near here by members of the police department's Specialized Investigations Division's Narcotics Unit. From his apprehension, he was taken to the South Precinct, where he immediately requested a lawyer and refused to make a statement has been taken to General Hospital to be checked out and then will be taken to the Nashville Jail where he will be booked on four counts of criminal homicide. In addition to the ripped clothing and various cuts, Todd was also walking with a limp that he didn't previously have. When police searched his backpack, they found a 45 caliber 